Hi, I'm Tyler Farah, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to Newman projections for a two carbon molecule. A Newman projection is a way of representing a molecule in more of a, a 3D perspective. And this is really important because organic chemistry is, is all about being able to visualize molecules in three dimensional space. And so we want as many tools as we can get to help us. Now, there's this really complex set of directions for drawing a Newman projection. We'll come back to that at the end as review because the, the best way to learn Newman projections is just to see them. But what I want you to focus in on right now, right up here at the top, Newman projections look down a single carbon-carbon bond from a front to back view. Now, this might be new to you. So what I mean is this, right? What we have here is our normal representation of a molecule from the side view. It's got a little bit of 3D perspective with the wedges and dashes, so that's pretty cool already. But what a Newman projection's big innovation is, is this. Imagine that you're like a little miniature superhero version of yourself, and you can just fly up next to this molecule, and we're gonna look straight down this carbon-carbon bond. What would you see? The answer to that question is actually literally what our Newman projection is going to show us. So to help visualize this, I've got a 3D model. We're not always going to have 3D models handy, but they're a great tool to learn this stuff in the first place. And I'm going to spin that 3D model around so that you can see the front on view. You can see what our little superhero avatar is seeing. But I want to do an exercise with you while we do that. Imagine that this is your right hand. Well, it, I mean, it is your right hand. It's on the right. And this over here on the left is your left hand. And I want you to imagine that with your right hand, you're actually grasping onto this chlorine atom. And similarly, with your left hand, you're actually grabbing onto this hydrogen atom. And I mean, literally reach out in space in front of you and imagine that you're grabbing onto those atoms. I'm, I'm doing it here as I record this video. I hope you're reaching out in front of you as you are, as you're watching it wherever you are. And what I want you to do is just with me, imagine that we are just going to start tugging on those atoms and just pull this into its correct orientation, this front on orientation that we're seeing here, right? So what do we see? Well, no surprise, right in front of us is this carbon atom. Of course, the, the same substituents are bound to that carbon atom. We haven't changed the molecule. We've just changed how, how we're looking at that molecule. So notice that there had been this hydroxyl group up here above us, and there, there actually is still a hydroxyl group up above us. We had had this chlorine atom that we were grasping in our in our right hand and no surprise the chlorine atom ends up on the right hand side of this this more uh, front on view similarly the hydrogen atom which had been in our left hand ends up on the left side of this front view what we're seeing is actually literally a Newman projection. This is exactly what the Newman projection is going to end up looking like. It's just a little bit more technologically advanced. So to draw a Newman projection, we, we basically just want to capture this picture in more of like a pen and paper format. So let's do that right now, right? The first thing that we see as we look down this carbon-carbon bond is this big old carbon atom staring us straight in the face. So for our Newman projection... We draw a circle representing that carbon atom that's right in front of us. Next, we observe that there are three substituents on three bonds sticking off almost like spokes on a wheel. And so we draw these spokes on a wheel into our Newman projection. Of course, from where we're standing, floating in front of this molecule, we can see this hydroxyl group up here. So we go ahead and label it. Same thing for the chlorine over here and, and the hydrogen on the left hand side. And now we reach one of the potential difficulties of the Newman projection. And that is this back carbon, this carbon that's further away from us. The problem is, and you can see this in our 3D model, we can't actually see that second carbon in the bond. It's, it, it, it's kind of like if you're standing in front of your house, <laughs> you can't see the back of your house because the back of your house is blocked by the front of your house. Well, it's the same idea here, right? As we're looking down this carbon-carbon bond, the front carbon is blocking the back carbon. So what we have to do as, 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 uh, as organic chemistry students, as, a, as burgeoning organic chemists, we just have to remember that there is a second carbon back there. 
We just can't see it. But what we can see are the substituents that are bound onto that carbon. And again, if we look at our, at our 3D model, you can see that there's actually a fluorine atom up here in the top left. And we can see the hydrogen atom in the top right and the, the bromine atom, which uh, it had been below us before we spun the molecule around and is still below us right now. That's it. We've just drawn our first Newman projection. I promised that we would come back to this uh, very detailed set of instructions at the end as review, and we can see it's not so intimidating now, right? We're going to start with a circle. That circle represents the carbon that we're looking at. We draw the three bonds coming off of that to the three substituents that we can see, and then we go ahead and actually label those substituents. We have to remember that the back carbon is, is not visible to us. It's obscured from view, but we can draw the three substituents bound to that back carbon and when we do that we have completed our Newman projection. Thanks for watching.